Right. So I don't really have uh, much in the way of an introduction. This is very awkward. It's not very organic. Uh, but that's why the plan is to eventually bring more people on. So if you're interested in <clears throat> sharing anything like that, experiences, there's a uh, email in the description. You can email to it, send an audio sample, and uh, a brief description, whether of yourself, or if you want to stay anonymous, or just uh, anything you're wanting to discuss. You should also see me lurking around YouTube comments, and uh, maybe I'll put up a couple of posts up in places, in Twitter, maybe uh, 4chan, shamelessly plugging this thing. I don't really know what it is yet. I think it's mostly just... Uh, there's a very significant issue arising amongst younger age groups of the early to mid-20s. Obviously not to dis, uh, to speak as if it's not an issue all around, all-encompassing, but it's significantly rising in an age group where it would or shouldn't have been so severe. Um, there's a lot... It's... I think it's just a large case of uh, alienation, really. People f feel purposeless, hopeless. Uh, there's no real unity or community. Common ground, common interest. Desocialization, I suppose. Uh, there's a lot of compounding. Social expectation may be brought on by social media. Because it's more of a highlight reel than an actual genuine representation of how people are so when they see that they always assume people are doing better than they are even though they could potentially be living just as mundane as anyone else so you see a lot in obviously there's a trend going on uh the doomer playlists you've probably seen them and if you <laughs> if you read the comments it's always just full of people just just uh looking for an outlet for how they feel, they're hopeless, they're struggling, uh, they feel alienated, they've lost friends, they've lost family, they've lost jobs, they can't even get a job, they've got no particular education or position or direction and no one to tell or talk to. Obviously the mental health services are, are just taxed to the brim, you can, it takes months to get an appointment and before you know it you're already people are already offing themselves before they even get the help they need I don't know and there's nothing to fall back on as I said it's a lot philosophically people are quite emaciated with it there's, there's no traditional religion or community people don't go to church every Sunday and I'm not I'm not religious myself either but again that's I suppose that's part of the problem is there's no replacement for that when you pull the the foundations of what held up society and kept a, uh, a group of people knitted together and functioning you erode the the rest of it at the bedrock it turns to dust I don't know just uh, <laughs> rampant nihilism and absurdism is completely absorbed a lot of the perceptions of, of the modern person but obviously maybe the uh, connectivity to the amount of news this constant flow of information is always negative and again the uh, ideological confrontation is very much in vogue people seeing what their traditional values and beliefs are being challenged being uh, vilified Oh, you know, certain groups of people and taking shots at a very large sector of the population. I'm sure you've all heard it before. Obviously, I suppose motivation becomes hard with such a, a bleak view. Um, yeah. So the whole the Duma meme is very much a uh, very telling of modern perceptions of the younger person uh, there's a video on this by a channel called Pursuit of Wonder I think it's called Who is the Doomer and obviously you know don't take the whole meme 
too seriously. It is a meme, it's a joke, but it's very telling how many people relate to it so frequently. It's not meant to completely, you know, solidify and classify an archetype of a person or a personality, but it's supposed it's in the way a song, lyric or a piece of art might relate to a person by invoking specific facets of a person and how they might feel. I think the memes do so in much the same way. So obviously yeah, you've seen them. You've seen them before, I assume. If not, look it up. 22 year old Doomer or whatever. But yeah. It's it's basically it's like a caricature, a modern iteration of like an emo kid, basically. Uh you know, the dark clothes, the uh bleak oh life is pointless, nihilistic views. But it's <laughs> it's actually <laughs> more substantiated unfortunately there's more of a reason to believe that or at least it appears that way when you view everything through a certain lens obviously you could you could sit and list them uh, unemployment increase decreasing accessibility to education education prices increasing housing markets through the roof uh, you know wages are stagnating um, obviously there's a very environmental scare whether you I'm not going to get into whether it, I'm not, no, just leave that for now. Um, uh, yeah, there's a, yeah, it's just a massive mental health crisis. It's a lot of the systems that established, or were established previously, are being challenged and eroded, and people are struggling to replace them or deal without them. So, uh, yeah, it just seems we're dealing with uh, an age of hopelessness, as the video title says. You could say it's all very uh, dramatic and gauche and, and uh, yeah, over the top. But again, even if you enjoy it, ironically, to some degree it is a problem. A lot of people are struggling. And like I said, you read these comment sections in places, it's telling. And people are starting Discord servers and things just to try and try and connect with others and to try and find some sort of common ground of worries because they're all they just feel like they're alienated from others and struggling on their own. So there have been uh, criticisms of it, saying, "Oh, it's just cognitive bias. It's the Barnum effect. It's a confirmation bias. You're just seeing the bitch that relate to you like a horoscope would." But I don't think that's really a good comparison. It's not intended to predict or reduce someone's personality to simplicity, but just to relate on the facets of a person that are already there. So yeah, alienation, isolation, hopelessness, lack of direction, uncertainty, worthlessness, blah blah blah, all exacerbate by compounding social pressure. And if that's already implicit, innate in someone, they'll relate to something that uh, discusses that regardless. I don't know. But yeah, like as I was saying earlier, unemployment, mental health. Uh, there's an obesity crisis, poor health in general, wages and dead end jobs with uh, tons of debt, or uh, wages and dead end jobs without tons of debt because they didn't go to university or college. And it's just this complete split, you know. You know, um, people have no idea whether it's even a, a viable or valuable investment because many of them don't ever end up in a job that's worthwhile in the first place that will actually pay it off so you know the family unit is crumbling uh, people are dating less housing market yeah I always said rental prices even then you know uh, ridiculous and there's countless things people are worried about I'm probably not even mentioning all of them I uh probably missing tons but I am just sort of spitballing here. I have no real. I have I have a list of topics and subjects, but nothing concrete. It's not probably not going to be very articulate. There's lots of gaps, by the way. I'm having to cut these out to keep it sort of some some uh, semblance of flow with the conversation. But even then, even beyond uh, choosing whether or not a university education is a viable investment, people are. Uh, there's a, a massive, massive problem with 
just direction in general. People don't have a clue what they want to do in the first place. It's a more common problem. Obviously, if you get Maslow's hierarchy of needs, there's a lot of uh, food and uh, things and such are much more accessible. Obviously, homes and relationships are becoming less so, but a career, people are struggling to even know really what they're looking forward to. And it's odd because I don't think the goals are completely extravagant either. There's very few that want to be rich or famous or want the world or want tons of money in a big house. It's just something that people would consider typical of previous generations. They have the whole boomer meme, they destroyed the economy, etc. Uh, it's, you know, a consensus, a house, uh, a relationship with someone, a family uh, that you can support with the job you have. Uh, and a job that doesn't really want to make you kill yourself every day or dread waking up to be less dramatic you know you, they don't want a, a mansion or a, a flashy expensive car or or even a perfect relationship just someone they can actually get along with and care about just stability mutuality reciprocation and these are relatively normal or as I would assume normal goals or wants but just seem harder and harder to obtain for an average person I suppose you know uh, the low skilled <laughs> labour market is just completely no one can afford anything but even then the higher skilled ones aren't doing that much better bachelors diplomas even the academics don't get paid tons I don't think I'd have to double check that I'm not sure with the citation um yeah you know and there's probably countless uh reasons I have no claims for accuracy by the way I haven't done any citation or, or this is just this is not intended to be a dissertation it's just me rambling um just an overview of potentiality but, um you know population density is increased uh you know Wealth inequality in general, the restrictions of education and entry-level position, which progress into jobs that give sustainable income. Um, you know, the, the, the whole, you need five years of experience in this this software that's only existed for three years joke. Um, and obviously, yeah, mental health in general, hopelessness makes it even harder to, to try and tackle the, the challenges and circumstances. In the first place, if, if you have no hope for achieving something in the first place why even bother to take the initial steps because the likelihood of it working out is minimal it's hard to push yourself to do that in the first place obviously it's not you shouldn't stop you have to keep pushing you don't really have any other choice there isn't any other choice but to push and to hope for things to get better because if you don't you're certain to stagnate you're certain to stay in a position of, of unfavorability but it doesn't dismiss the fact that that's really difficult especially considering all the fa uh, things I've said before and especially mental health to me is one of the biggest ones it, it's again hopelessness and it's hard to find something when every time you look forward to it to actually uh, put it into perspective it looks almost impossible to reach at least maybe that's just my, my point of view maybe I'm really pessimistic and uh, self-defeating but it seems to be uh, a widespread issue but again that could just be where I'm looking uh, confirmation bias I don't know and it's, it's really odd because the current generation you know uh, sort of long, even younger millennials uh, you'd sort of late zoomers whatever you want to call them so 20s early 20s they're more academically prepared and knowledge wealthy than any other generation in recent years regardless of their former ed education in, in many cases a lot of them have spent time looking things up just for fun because they can they have that accessibility but they are the most snubbed and dismissed 
and given terrible pay. There's such a high expectation in terms of formal education for these people when in the past you could have just walked into a, a job interview and said, yeah, I can do it and shown, you know, your pop, your bootstraps and blah, blah, blah. And it's, you even, you have algorithms that manually reject job applications. <laughs> and they happen to find workarounds. They do um, bizarre tasks, so they they blank the text on the first page. So when the algorithm tries to pick it up, it can't find it, and they just reserve it for the second page. So they're forced to accept it. It's really, really bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> What's reality? I don't know. You just have to, uh... When my bird was looking at my computer monitor, I thought, whoa, that bird has no idea what he's looking at. And yet, what does the bird do? Does he panic? No, he can't really panic. He just does the best he can. Is he able to live in a world where he's so ignorant well he doesn't really have a choice yeah he can kind of live it's not it's usually usually the bird's okay even though he doesn't understand the world and uh he can kind of learn what's safe and what's uh dangerous so uh that's where i've been living you're that bird looking at the monitor and you're thinking to yourself, I can figure this out. And you know, maybe you have some bird ideas that are... Maybe that's the best you can do. Like I said, it's just a catch-22. Awareness of the problems can just cause feelings of hopelessness and worsen despair. The hope of achieving the goals just appears futile. You just Sisyphus pushing that boulder up the hill, and is uh, it's what Camus says, isn't it? You have to imagine Sisyphus happy in the first place. But obviously, I suppose that's the philosophical portion. Is the uh, we're wired in such a way that we rely on causality and and purpose and reason. We need to do something in order to have a result from it and if you can't see that result happening it's hard to to push forward and it's obviously I think that's even why a lot more ex existentialism is is uh, occurring is because when you take away the small term relatively small term goals and achievements you reveal the ugly that everything by definition has no real end goal you know it's, it's short term it's about the journey as they say but when you take that yeah you take that away and you just start to think well what's the point anyway you know uh, the sun's going to engulf the planet the solar system will be completely obliterated uh, Mil the Milky Way and Andromeda are about to clash and even if you survive all that entropy is going to kick our ass and however many Tenth to the power trillion billion whatever ridiculous amount of time. So I don't know. It's hard to overcome all that if you don't have those short-term uh, nuggets of of meaning, <laughs> goals, purpose, responsibility. You know the whole uh, Peter Peterson thing. I suppose he's always going on about picking up the heavy, heaviest thing you can carry but you it's not always possible to even have the opportunity to do that you know, and some people pick something up they can carry and they feel like they can carry more but no one will let them you know because you don't have these particular documents or you even in entry level positions I think a lot of things are being outsourced as well which doesn't help and a lot of uh, being imported instead of finding such in the origin I don't know I don't know obviously that gets quite political then and people will start whining at you so you don't really want to talk about that at the minute 
But again, that's I suppose. No, I don't know. I suppose you have to find purpose in the smaller moments and happiness in the smaller things. But again, that's really, really difficult if you can't even fulfill the most basic portions of the hierarchy, Maslow's hierarchy. It's very useful. Um, maybe that's the problem, is people are trying to tackle portions of it all at once. They're trying to get to the end of it deciding a, a, a purpose and meaning without even having stability in the first place and maybe that is again to do with social media putting more social pressure on doing well doing as well as peers as if there's any sort of <laughs> limit or guideline to achieving something I don't know and I suppose there is, again anything that would have kept you afloat is being like even even escapism parts of culture used for for feeling better for a while uh movies and video games and they've all been uh politicized and and <laughs> everything has an ideological message in it and it can't just be fun anymore it has to have some sort of message that's going to change your worldview and you can't go anywhere without it. There's nowhere you can go where there isn't something telling you you need to be better or you're a bad person or <laughs> fundamentally you're flawed and there's nothing you can do about it besides self-flagellate verbally and mentally. <laughs> Even marketing teams, adverts, they all do the same thing. Obviously, we've had fiascos, uh, the whole get woke, go broke thing. I don't know. But again, that's always been a problem. Marketing teams are just in general advertising is psychological manipulation not like in, in the 40s or 50s where it was just here's a product actually it's probably earlier than that there was, a, there was an advert I watched recently the log cabin syrup advert which is just this is a good syrup this product buy it it's good <laughs> that's it but there's no it will give you friends it will make you attractive it will if you buy this car everyone will like you it's nothing to that degree it's just straightforward and it's selling you the product not selling you some sort of uh, effect of the product anyway that's a whole different thing marketing psychological manipulation the torches of freedom and uh, latching on to political movements as if they have any sort of intention or care for what they're actually purporting to support they don't care they're just leeching off of it for money but that should be obvious so I'm pre probably preaching to a choir with that. So I think... I think the the biggest... takeaway and the challenge is to continue, I think, is the problem. You know, and to, like I said, thousands, thousands of people... Well, not thousands. I'm sure tons of philosophers have stated, tons of people in the past, even comedians. I think Norm MacDonald said something about being lucky to be alive and perseverance. I'm not sure, though, so... Uh, you with even with the acknowledgement of absurdity or or pointlessness you have to push there's no other choice you have two choices <laughs> kill yourself or die let yourself wither or push while you can live life as, as uh, cliche and dramatic as that sounds, it, you don't have any other option. This is just uh, sort of embrace stoicism a little bit as well, is to, you can't control what happens around you, but you can control how you react to it to a degree. You can try. Yeah, have, uh, as again, Maslow and Young, even in his individuation, they say, Realization of the self-truth and true, true given purpose can bring happiness or fulfillment. But not having those is not a massive deal. It, just pushing towards it is important in happiness. I think that can bring fulfillment in itself is actually trying in the first place and pushing and persevering. They shouldn't. People shouldn't be swayed by roadblocks or failure or 
or, or not swayed permanently. I can understand it pissing you off, but not letting it defeat you completely is important. You know, you have to meet every single failure with the same enthusiasm as you did previously. But again, that's not easy. You, have, you can't just not lose hope. It's hard, because considering everything I've said, it seems like it is, but the, the, I'm going to keep repeating it because it's the most important and, in my opinion, poignant thing you can say is you don't have a choice. Really, you do, but it's, <laughs> you know, that's ridiculous. Your two choices are stop existing, give up, or you push forward. And I think the choice is obvious with that. No matter how much you don't want to, no matter how much you're struggling to, you can't just give up. Obviously, I think distraction's a problem as well, actually. Uh, the constant inf influx of just stimuli, constant, constant, you know. Uh, we've grown up in a world of, of fast-paced video games and pornography and... Uh, you know, stimuli, attention spans are at an all-time low, and I'm sure it doesn't help in case anyone has any sort of neurological disorder, such as attention deficit or attention hyperactive disorder or whatever. Um, if that doesn't get remedied, I imagine there's tons of people in a position where they are fairly intelligent and capable, but because they've been so easily able to, to misdirect their ability, they've been left by the wayside, and Again, with that inaccessibility to education and, and skill training and, and application, it's made it worse. And then that also has a knock-on effect with their confidence, because if they feel like they've been failed or they have failed and they can't push forwards with anything, they're going to lose hope. And then why, why would they want to push forward? There's no point. But again, you can't. That's not an option. No matter how shit it all is, it's not an option. So I actually, I wonder if all the things I said previously, all the constant stimuli, has actually, is maybe that's a potential uh, problem with depression and anxiety, or, you know, all very related in the uh, frontal lobe. Problems with the amygdala, I believe. I'll have to look it up afterwards, but, you know, don't, don't quote me, I haven't got citations with me. Um... You, you, we fried our dopamine receptors, I suppose, and serotonin receptors, I think. Like I said, I'm not. You'd have to. I'll have to check it up. If anyone can correct me in the comments, feel free. I might mention it in the X episode if I can cite it. Um, and I imagine that must have something to do with all the the mental health issues, the anhedonia, if you like, because people have no reason to motivate themselves because they don't even get a response from doing something or accomplishing something I in personally in, in my experience I've you know I made videos on my own my personal channel which I hate I hate the videos they're so bad the editing's terrible the audio is awful this I probably won't even be happy with this when it comes out but I'm very self-defeating but even then when I finish something I'm never happy with it ever and even if I finished it and I'm happy with it at the time it doesn't feel right it's like it's missing that stimuli and maybe I have to, again, I've destroyed my receptors. I'm not sure. I'll be interested to see if there's a potential uh, basis of study for that. That would be very... Uh, there probably might already be some done and I just haven't looked or I haven't found them. If you Again, if you know that, feel free to tell me. Anyway, I don't know how long I've been talking for. I assume it's a fair amount of time. I, I, I don't know how long these are going to be. I have no real goal for it. It's just something to to unload with, if you if you like. Um, and I, I mainly to give voice to others, even if it's just a bizarre niche community. Anyone that uh, struggled with anything, or is or is concerned about mental health, or, or they just want to talk about something. Or, or even then, you can. Just, it's not all going to be doom and gloom. You can still make <laughs> jokes and have a laugh. I suppose it's just a circle. It's like a... <laughs> you know, you remember the Hindu thing? <laughs> Maybe it's just like that, I suppose. Like a meet-up for all your weirdos that feel a bit alienated. I'm actually probably inviting trouble uh, trying to bring in people with issues and... Uh, 
contacting certain groups because they'll probably just spam me with garbage and that's fine if anything maybe letting trolls on will actually be more entertaining but at the same time maybe the point is people with issues need to have a talk most of all because you air give voice to the ugliness you can't keep sweeping under the rug maybe that's the problem in the first place people aren't giving any attention to these big problems they're just sweeping oh, they, oh this person's weird these people have these opinions these are oh, you know you don't want to talk to them you don't want to give them any sort of attention just get rid of them and it doesn't work you can't repress something it will come back with a vengeance now as I said I, I don't know how long I've been talking for um, I assume hang on let me check uh, 40 minutes maybe a bit later probably be less of a cut or the silence maybe half an hour would be fine just for the first episode because it's just me on my own talking bollocks so not quite as entertaining probably not entertaining at all we'll see but if you want to be on if you want to talk uh, send an email to uh, comment on the channel if you want uh, send an audio sample you know you don't have a completely ridiculously muffled voice if you have to edit the audio to sound more uh, coherent that's fine just don't cut out any of the sound because we need to sync it up if we're doing it remotely over discord or whatever or um yeah you'll get a cool little little avatar in the beginning as well <laughs> if that's any interest to you you can use a, a screen name or you can just keep you anonymous you can you could i'll let you plug social medias or whatever if you want Obviously, this is just starting at the minute, so I don't even know if it's going to be worth it for that. Even It's mainly just for people to come and just sort of talk. That's it, just give a bit of a voice to people. Even if no one hears it. Or even if just a handful of people hear it. I suppose the idea is if it's self... Uh, self... A feedback loop, basically. If more people want to talk, more people will listen to other people talk, and they want to talk, it builds itself up. But uh, yeah, cheers for listening and yeah, feel free to join in.